Welcome back to a Clan A Day podcast brought to you by BagtownClans.com. I'm your host, Colin McDonald, and today we'll explore the origins of Clan Hunter, a clan with a history dating back to the early Norman period and intertwined with the forests and royal lands of Scotland for over eight centuries. The surname Venator, meaning hunter, first appeared in Normandy around the 11th century migrating to Scotland by the early 1100s with Norman knights who followed King David I. Our story begins with William Venator, who witnessed significant events during David I's reign. The hunters held a distinctive place from these early days, their surname likely originating from the venatic roles they held. It was not just a name but a title granted to those who guarded the forests of kings serving as foresters and providers of game for the royal table. Known as Prefectus Venatoris, or Chief Forester, the hunters began their legacy as Scotland's foremost guardians of its royal woodlands. The earliest hunter estate, Arneil, known today as Hunterston, was officially granted in 1374. This title and estate were bestowed upon William Hunter by Robert II of Scotland in recognition of faithful services rendered. This land grant preserved by the family is one of Scotland's oldest existing clan charters and stands as a testimony to the loyalty and prominence of the Hunter family in Scottish affairs. The lands at Hunterston would become the clan's central seat, securing their place in Ayrshire for generations the hunters not only gained lands but established themselves as hereditary foresters, responsible for managing and protecting the royal forests. Their tasks were not without challenges. In the 15th century, John Hunter, Laird of Hunterston, was given the title Custos, or Keeper, of the forests on Little Cumbrae Island, then part of the royal estate and populated with deer and game. Little Cumbrae and other lands around Hunterston were safeguarded under this hereditary title, making the Hunters one of Scotland's earliest environmental stewards in a role that brought prestige and reward. Clan Hunter's military history is as storied as their landholding legacy. In the early 16th century, John Hunter, the 14th Laird, met his end at the Battle of Flodden in 1513, fighting valiantly for King James IV. His son, Mungo, continued this legacy and fought at the Battle of Pinky Claw in 1547, where he too fell in battle, leaving his young son Robert to inherit Hunterston. This loyalty on the battlefield was honoured by the Crown, although tragedy often accompanied it. In a rare reprieve from military duties, Robert was exempted from direct service in 1542 by James V due to sickness and infirmity, so long as he sent his eldest son in his stead, further entrenching the clan's duty to the Scottish kingship. The 17th century brought both challenges and expansion for the hunters. Robert Hunter, who had studied at the University of Glasgow, continued the family tradition as a landholder and was ordained as a minister, founding the Hunters of Kirkland, a cadet branch of the clan. This period also saw the family extend their reach beyond Hunterston as Robert Hunter's descendants sought military careers across the Atlantic, including Robert Hunter, who became governor of New York and Virginia during the colonial era. The Hunters faced financial hardships in the early 1700s but overcame them thanks to the careful management of a later Robert Hunter who re-established the family's prosperity. His granddaughter, Eleonora, eventually inherited Hunterston and married Robert Caldwell who took on the Hunter name. Together they rejuvenated the estate, preserving the Hunter legacy and building the Hunterston house that still stands today. Into the 19th and 20th centuries, the Hunters continued to produce distinguished military leaders. 
Lieutenant General Sir Aylmer Hunter Weston, a 27th Laird and grandson of Jane Hunter Weston, served with the British Expeditionary Force during World War I and commanded troops at Gallipoli, later representing North Ayrshire as a Member of Parliament. His leadership during some of the most pivotal battles of the 20th century marked him as a respected figure both in Scotland and in military history. Over the years, Clan Hunter has expanded its influence not only through the battlefield but also through preserving its lands and heritage. From Royal Charter holders to military strategists, the Hunters have remained steadfast in their duty, adapting to Scotland's changing political and social landscape. Their crest, a greyhound in a crown, symbolises the speed and loyalty for which they are renowned while their motto, Cursum Perficio, or I have completed the course, echoes the strength and resilience that have characterised Clan Hunter for nearly a millennium. Today, Lady Pauline Hunter of Hunterston presides as the 30th Chief of Clan Hunter. The family seat remains at Hunterston Castle, an ancient stronghold that has weathered centuries of Scottish history. The clan motto and crest are as relevant as ever, with the clan continuing its legacy through stewardship, scholarship and an enduring dedication to Scotland's heritage. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the history of Clan Hunter. We hope you've enjoyed exploring the legacy of a family whose loyalty to the Scottish Crown and to their land remains unbroken after centuries. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow for another episode of A Clan A Day podcast. This is Colin MacDonald signing off with a hearty Go Nairi and Both Are Leet.